Okay, so welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Heretic Studios and myself, Toko. Uh, tonight's just going to be a real quick tutorial or tip video based on the Photoshop brush engine, and in particular, making brushes used for arti artistic purposes, like a pencil or something like that. So, start up Photoshop, and I'm just going to make a new project. 512 by 512 works. Bring that into the center here layers and really what you want to do first is I already got one made here just select the standard brush I'm going to check the 19 and usually and this is the case for a lot of brushes unless you're using like a uh, texture from a photo or something like that but for like a pencil or a paintbrush you can just use or manipulate the default setting so I'm going to go to my brush engine over here. I'll just bring it out. And you may be familiar with this dialog, but and you may have went through most of these things. But a lot of people don't notice that you can actually check the brush tip shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off everything, go here, and from within this menu, if you really kind of flip around, you can tell with especially larger brushes that spacing is an issue so I'm just gonna take that down to one percent and that really makes it look like more of a solid line especially when it's more of an art brush and for a pencil um, anyone that's really sketches a lot or even just uses a pencil knows that typically they're not a perfect circle so you can just bring in this edge just a little and it's usually not perfectly centered so I'm just gonna kinda of bring it up 20 degrees. That'll work. Diameter, I'm going to reduce that down to about four. Four works uh, for what we're going to do. The next uh, part of making a pencil brush itself is really uh, bringing the texture in. So actually, uh, what I'm going to do for the texture so to be more easily identifiable, I'm just going to bring that back up to a good size brush that you can really see 18 or so. Can I zoom in a little bit? And we're going to go into texture settings. Now, um, you can flip through all these textures, but the one I usually use for paper is this default texture called uh, Metal Landscape. Uh, I never really checked any of these, but this one or this one works. I'll check this one for now. So I'm using the second one, and what I'm going to do is just going to, you can tell that there is a texture there. And it's not working so great, so we'll switch to the other one. That works. And that's the main part about making a brush, honestly, is you just want to experiment, and experiment and experiment and experiment. That's all it's about. So I'm just going to sort of find what I'm looking for. Just kind of bring it out a little bit. And remember, you might want to reduce your brush to really your final size, which for me is going to be four. And you can tell in the preview window, no, we want a little bit more grit than that. And we're getting there. Just keep playing around, bump it up maybe. And that should work. Just a little bit more. So the next part you want to do to emulate a pencil stroke is, pencil strokes aren't perfect like this. So go into your shape dynamics, oops, let's go to actual pixels, shape dynamics, and basically automatically just clicking at the default settings are fine. If you've got an angled lead like this one in particular, um, <coughs> or any angled type brush, say you got a paintbrush that's sort of the oval shape like so, when you're doing the brush tip shape settings, um, you want to set your angle jitter, and I usually set it just to direction. That really guides it around, and no matter what direction you're pointing to, the front, or usually like, say if you got an oval, it'll probably be like this, and that brush falls it around. So, that's good, and sometimes that's not really great. Um, I'll show you an example in a minute, because Sometimes Photoshop really can't keep up with it, and it doesn't create a solid line in the end. But back to our pencil here. 
The next step is other dynamics. Now, this really just lets you use pressure settings to control the brush itself. So you can tell now with other dynamics that, and as you can tell here, uh, pen pressure can control opacity, and shape dynamics lets it control the overall shape. Together, this makes a really good combo. You can kind of play around with the settings, but usually default works. I sometimes set it to 20, and this is sometimes about 10. And I'll put it back to zero. It's really just tinkering. So I'm going to turn on smoothing again. And if you really want that grainy effect, you can hit noise. It kind of sharpens the edge. I'm going to leave it off. And that's almost it. We're almost done. Um, I'm going to zoom back in so I can see the brush. Um, I'm going to kind of turn it off. Those two real quick. You can turn it back on if you want to, but I'm just going to turn them off. And I'm going to go to scattering. Now, usually a pencil is solid, but sometimes it's a tad scattered. Now, if you go across, you can tell it's kind of far out. So I'm going to go back to 50%, and that looks just about right, maybe 40 or 35. That's pretty good. So I'm going to turn back on shape dynamics and other dynamics. And I'm going to bump it down to 2 pixels. Now if we zoom out, we can tell that's a pretty decent pencil brush. There's two main things that are left. When using a pencil brush, I usually keep my default setting for opacity of the brush to 75. And if you set um, the hardness down, and this is another perk of using the default brush as your start, you can still control the hardness. If you set that down to about 40, it creates like a smaller line or a softer line. And sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Kind of play around the size, and that looks pretty good for it's a basic sketch line. It's working for me. And really, your sketch brush or your personalized brush depends on the resolution of the screen, in my opinion. So now, since you got your brush done, you just hit this little icon here, and soft elliptical, and that's due to the fact that we have it set soft, but I can just call it um, sketch pencil number two or something, and that's more or less a number two pencil lead. So that's really been creating a brush, and real quick, I'll show you an example. Uh, earlier I mentioned if you use the directional settings on sort of large uh, or wide brushes, sometimes it gives you non-desirable effects. So here's one of my paint brushes from an earlier release. I'm going to turn off wet edges. We don't really need that right now. And as you can see, it's not really following my direction at all. But if I wanted it to, I could simply go back, hit direction, and it works pretty good on this because this is an overall rounded brush. Again, I would fix the spacing here, and that creates a pretty decent paintbrush. But if I were to use a flatter brush, say I'm going to go back to my defaults, and go back to brush tip, and really bring it down. So now it's more like a calligraphy brush. If I were to do directional on that, as you can see, when I bring it around, Look at the corners, the quick changes. It's trying to map it to those subtle turns. But in the process, it's kind of distorting the overall angle and making these little bursts. So that's basically what the basics of creating an artistic brush using the default brushes and the Photoshop brush engine. You can, of course, experiment as much as you want. The limit is really what your imagination leads you to. Um, you can use already existing textures, anything you want. Again, the limit is really just your imagination. So put that back. And that's just been a quick tutorial explaining the Photoshop brush engine and making artistic brushes, as I've said before, like four times now. Um, have a good night, morning, or whatever it is, wherever you're at. And until next time, this has been Toko from Heretic Studios. 
See you later and have a good day.